All right, so this is a calculus problem in which they want us to find the limit as x approaches infinity for a given function, as well as x approaching negative infinity for that same given function. And the function that we have is this rational function here. Um, what they really want us to find with these two limits as x approaches infinity and negative infinity are the horizontal asymptotes. All right, so as we go off to a negative or positive infinity, we're looking for horizontal asymptotes. Um, they want us to find all the asymptotes as well, so we'll find the vertical ones also. Uh, let's see, let's find the horizontal asymptotes first. All right, let's find the horizontal ones first. Uh, to find the horizontal asymptotes, one way to look at this, maybe probably the easiest way to look at this, is to notice that the degree of the numerator is a 4 and the degree of the denominator is a 4. So since the degree for the numerator is a 4, uh, let's see, the book I'm using says since m is equal to n, since the two degrees are the same, numerator and denominator, then what we need to do is look at the leading coefficients for both the numerator and the denominator and simply right, just set uh, our y equals, this is going to be our horizontal asymptote, to whatever that ratio happens to be. Well, obviously the ratio, or the number for a leading coefficient up top is a 2. And for the denominator, since I don't see one, it's an automatic 1. So, okay, so y equals 2 is the limit as x approaches infinity. Turns out it's the same as x approaches negative infinity. So that's one easy way to find the horizontal asymptote or asymptotes. In this case, though, you know, we, the, the book shows there is another method that we could use if you wanted to. Let me show you that as well, okay? When you're dealing with rational functions like these, what you can do is you can concentrate on the denominator and look at the denominator's largest exponent. In this case, it's going to be a 4, right? So I'm writing out my problem again here, rewriting this thing. I'm going to rewrite it just like this. So noticing that the denominator's largest exponent is a 4, what we can do with that x to the fourth is we can divide every single term in the numerator and the denominator by x to the fourth. So I'm going to write it like this. Cut, divide everybody here by x to the fourth, even these guys on the bottom. So, you know, let's say that the, let's say that the numerator's largest exponent was a five. Doesn't matter. You're concentrating on the denominators, right? All of these terms in the bottom, the denominator's largest exponent. That's the one you're looking for. And then you're going to divide everybody by that same largest exponent, in this case, x to the fourth. What does that do for us? Well, here's what it does for us, okay? Here's what it does for us. It says, all right, hey, look, these x to the fourths cancel out. And so I'm simply left with a 2 right there, coming from there, okay? Um, let's see, x to the third cancels out with x to the fourth. Well, it cancels out three of these x's down here, so I'm left with 2 over x, right? Because three of these cancel out with three of these, leaving me with one more. Uh, hey, look, two of these x's cancel out with two of these x's on the bottom. That leaves me with x squared on the bottom. This is minus 60 over x squared. And I'm going to do the same thing for these three terms in the denominator. So let's see, this is, uh, this is just going to be a 1 minus, let's see, this is a 61 over x squared, right? And out of this, nothing cancels. I'm just going to leave that as 900 over x to the fourth. Now, the reason I'm doing that is because you should recognize from calculus that as the limit approaches infinity or negative infinity, all right, these terms right here, like this one, this one, this one and this one are all going to go to zero. All right. So as we head off to both positive infinity and negative infinity, as we head off to negative infinity as well, all right, these terms right here, with anything anything with an x or an x squared or an x to the third or an x to fourth, anything with an with an x in its denominator, these guys are all going to go to zero. So do you see that we're left with just a two over one? And that's simply the case, no matter in which direction we're heading, right, positive or negative. And so I'm just going to say, hey, the limit is 2. No problem there. All right, let's go a little bit further. Now we have the horizontal asymptotes. Let me write that up here. So we have the horizontal asymptotes. 
in this case there's really only one asymptote is y equals 2 that's it okay what about the vertical asymptotes All right for this exact same problem well let's see to find the vertical asymptotes let me go back to my original problem here um, I need to find out what value or values for x is going to make this denominator a zero all right now it's not easy to see that right now but if I if I factor everything as much as I can up top and factor these terms here on the bottom as much as I can I hope you see this is what I'll end up with all right I'll end up with uh, let's see these guys in the numerator I'll have a 2x squared in common that I can take out I guess I'll show you the intermediate steps here I'm left with an x squared plus x minus 30 and these three terms on the bottom turn into x squared minus 36 and x squared uh, let's see minus 25 okay but it turns out that this trinomial in the numerator and these two guys on the denominator can still be factored further okay so I'm going to factor these guys a little bit more I'm going to leave that 2x squared alone in the numerator but this trinomial here up top I can factor a little bit more into x plus 6 and x minus 5 and since both of these in the denominator are difference of squares I can do this All right we can split up this x squared minus 36 as x plus 6 and x minus 6 and this x squared minus 25 is x plus 5 and x minus 5 and now that I factored as much as possible can you see that there are four values that would make my denominator zero okay there'd be a negative 6 coming out of this one positive 6 coming out of this one negative 5 for that one and positive 5 for that one all four of those values would make my denominator a zero so the function is undefined at four of those points but not all four of them are vertical asymptotes why not well do you see that this binomial and that one Right, since they're the same on top and on the bottom they cancel out as well as these so it turns out there are really only two vertical asymptotes x equals 6 and x equals negative 5 okay so there are really only two vertical asymptotes now the last thing right if you're uh, my math lab or your homework wants one more uh, one more thing out of this problem and that is okay so you have the two vertical asymptotes fine but um, what is the function doing as far as as we approach these two values coming from either side so maybe the question is asking something like this All right, let me let me write um, our simplified form here I've got x minus 6 and x plus 5 so this is the simplified form of our original rational uh, function and so we know here's zero right there so we know that there is a vertical asymptote here at six and we know that there's a vertical asymptote here at negative five let's find out the behavior of the function um, what is the function going to do as we approach these asymptotes coming from either side right coming from either side let's let's start off with this one if we approach negative five on the left side of negative five as we come at it from the left side the way I'm pointing here with my finger all of these numbers over here are negative right negative six negative seven negative eight etc so all of these numbers here are negative that makes these two parentheses here a negative minus six stays a negative and a negative plus five stays a negative that means I've got two negatives in the denominator which is really just a positive since they're being multiplied and a negative value squared stays positive so it turns out that everything over here coming from the from the right hand side of the function right coming coming in this direction here everything is going to be positive All right let's try out coming coming at negative 5 from the from the right hand side of it though coming from the left it's going to be positive let's see what happens coming from the right well let's see how about values of negative 4 or negative 3 or negative 2 or negative 1 and you, know, you can pick any one you want how about uh, negative 4 for instance if I plugged in a negative 4, negative 4 minus 6 is a negative number. Negative 4 plus 5, though, actually is a positive number. So I'd have a negative times a positive, which is a negative. 
So my denominator is negative, my numerator is positive because it's being squared anyways, right? So I've got a negative on the bottom and a positive on top. Actually, it turns out all of these values down here in between negative 5 and 6 are negative numbers. All right, so coming at negative 5 from the right-hand side is a negative infinity. A negative infinity. Coming at negative 5 from the, the left-hand side is a positive infinity. Likewise, coming at 6 from the left-hand side is a negative infinity. But coming at 6 from the right-hand side, let's see, these numbers would be 7 or 8 or negative, oh, sorry, or these are all positives, right? Positive 8, positive 9. You can plug in any number you want over here. Let's say 8, right? If we plugged in 8, 8 minus 6 is positive, and 8 plus 5 is positive, and my numerator is automatically positive, so the whole thing is positive. So we're talking about a positive infinity, right? A positive infinity that's going on on this side, coming at 6 from the right-hand side. So you could say, all right, that we have vertical asymptotes. As far as the vertical asymptotes are concerned, you could say that, look, the limit as we approach negative uh, 5 coming from the left hand side is going to be, right, for this particular function, is going to be a positive infinity. That's this thing here. Right? And likewise, the limit as we approach, you can see that or not, the limit as we approach negative uh, 5 coming from the right hand side of this function is a negative infinity, right? If we approach negative 5 coming from the right-hand side is a negative infinity. And I could say that the limit as we approach 6 coming from the left-hand side, 6 coming from the left-hand side here, is this negative infinity for our function. And the limit as we approach 6 coming from the right-hand side of our function Right, here we go, coming at 6 from the right-hand side is a positive infinity as we have up there. So there you go, I hope that helps.